Welcome, Comet Nation, to Commander Esports. This is Overwatch, the inaugural game for the fall season. Our first game. Uh, we are up against another Ephrata day, another today. Mission. And very excited Man, to have this so game. Excited. We're starting off on Lee Jung Tower. Uh, here we have Control Center, the first of three maps in a best of two out of three. Five, this is in the PIEA, four, a local three, league played throughout Pennsylvania. Two, one, so we look like we are going one, with a composition of Tech, We're Team in Captain on Zarya. We All got uh, Shunem and Steel on DPS, <laughs> going with Sojourn and May. And for our supports, going we have Anna and Lucio. Looks like we're going up top to start. Pushing Ephrata back. Put the pressure on. Taking the point immediately. There he goes down. It's a full respawn for Ephrata. And uh, plenty of space being made by, <laughs> actually, uh, not just Sasha but Anna as well. Our Sajran set there, doing a great job of putting the pressure down through the spawn. Not so fast. Playing the terrain and ensuring that the effort's going to have I a hard time actually approaching. There's a kill. One, two. Oh, bubble from Tech, keeping uh, shooting the game here. Three. Gotta stay on your toes, soldier. Coming around the back. Effort is in disarray. And four. Precision Good lord. Looks control. like someone got in the back here. Uh, a little bit of... Uh, Sombra, but our Lucio and Anna handle her just fine. I appreciate the support. It's a new team this year. Uh, our only real returning players we have are Jaden on Flex support, and we have uh, Tech, otherwise known as Brock, on main tank. We have a pause for a moment here. Uh, just gonna give everything a moment. I'll be right back while I make sure that everything is uh, hunky dory on the end of this game. Oh, Michael, thanks so much for uh, subscribing. We really appreciate that. Welcome to the channel, man. Looks like we have a disconnect here. Uh, let's just check. Yep, looks like we lost a player for Ephrata. Obviously not ideal. They have plenty of time in their pause to make sure that player can uh, connect back in. So we have a good, fair, fun match. In the meantime, let's talk a little bit about uh, this season. So we are in what's called a fall brawl. That means we're going to have two games every week. Now, typically, your Tuesday night games are going to be played at 6 o'clock in the evening. Thursday night games at 8. Uh, for this particular uh, game, though, we did agree with Ephrata and move this to 7. You know, they had another obligation. They have a team playing Valorant as well. And, uh, you know, we want to try and be flexible. So we ended up facing them at 7 instead. And uh, here we are. Um, our game on Thursday is going to be against Mannheim, which is kind of an old opponent of ours. Uh, they've been a really strong team for several years running. We're really excited to see how they play uh, and test ourselves, our new team against them. Because again, we only have two returning players. We have a new fresh crop, a lot of freshmen on the team, but a lot of old returning talent as well. Uh, we have in the role of assistant coach uh, Connor, who actually was in the inaugural team for the esports team uh, at the start of Penn Manor's esports journey. Uh, certainly, I think it, it's easy to say uh, our most skilled player, highly knowledgeable, coming back uh, as an alumni to really lend his talents, his insight, and his intelligence to the team. It's been fantastic to see him working with them. And I think you're going to see a lot coming out of this team, a lot of really impressive plays. Uh, Hippy Dippy has joined the game, so I think we are about to resume. Hey, Zogstar. Good to see you. Just in a few moments here. So in a uh, control map like this, you're typically going to see a lot of brawls, but uh, we're honestly seeing Ephrata throw themselves into Penn Manor in a way that is not lending themselves towards victory. It's going to be up to Ephrata to try and really put the pressure on here. Gladys, thank you so much for subscribing, or for liking, rather. Appreciate it. Um, so in the back here, we've got Nate and Wyatt on support. 
Wyatt is the uh, player, big big Jiffer here. Um, or actually, no, sorry, that's Nate on Anna, and then Wyatt is on uh, Night Pika. That is our Lucia. So both are new players. And uh, Overwatch 2, the supports can't just stand back and support. They actually have to get up there and do some damage. And uh, Wyatt finds himself in a difficult position. Aggression definitely enables them to uh, overcome that. They take apart the uh, push from Ephrata. Looks like they're trying to get a pick on Lucio, but it seems like he's going to escape. He's going to get out of here. Slippery character. That man is finding himself a little split. Steph comes around to the side to try and get a few kicks. Here's by Tech. Ooh, there's a quick headshot coming out of Seth. We have uh, some harassment on the rear, but the supports are taking care of it. Oh, my. And a boop followed by a jump. But yeah, the supports are being a little distracted by Diva here. Running around on the side. A little, a little bit of a... It's go time. Uh, there's a circus going on here. Diva finds her way into the point to try and get the open time, but uh, unfortunately they're sacrificing the tank roll, which is pretty significant. Seth picks him out of the air. Team kill and a clean win on map one. Score. One. So for those of you who are new to Overwatch, a control map like this is better known as King of the Hill. You have to control the center point for a maximum amount of time. You'll notice the percentages up top. You're looking to get to 100%. Um, the best laid plans have there, backup plans. You go on to the next map. So it's sort of like a best two out of three on the Li Jung map. So right now, uh, Pemmater is in the Stay lead, 1-0. to zero. If they it's win this next alive. map on um, Jung, they will win the first map. This is the regular season, so it's best 2 out of 3. And uh, yeah, so far we're in a great position. Looks like we're going to get Symmetra using her teleporter to just give the team a little bit of a jump on location. Oh, no, they're going for a full-on Symmetra attack on the point. Teleporter built up in the window, and now they are on the point, and lasers have been set up the second... That they enter, that Ephrata enters the point, they're going to be attacked by auto aiming lasers and defense grid that's set, set up. Reaper gets a few early shots in. Oh, locked in by this brutal wall from May. Excellent job. Uh, and already down one player for Ephrata. Teleporter comes down again to give it a huge egress. The clutch healing keeps our tank up and a soup and a boot knocks. Diva out. Map trying to get away. He doesn't, though. And uh, we just have. Lara creeping away with barely a hit point, and May snatched her out of the sky. Oh, the humanity. Oh, terrible and wonderful. So, let's see. We have a real close-up uh, strategy here. Reinhardt, Symmetra, and May, all close-range characters. Uh, they have the ability to put a little bit of damage out. This would be the first to come in here. Not typically what you want to do. It lacks the sustain. It lacks the hit point pool to really be able to spearhead their attack. They really need their tank to be coming in first. They're playing right into the excellent positioning and team play from Ten Manor with uh, Seth coming around the rear again and preparing a hard back line. Oh, so it looks like he is, yep, a little overconfidence. Opens up uh, an opportunity for Ephrata. If they can press their opportunity, this could be the point for Ephrata. And Vitaly Joe comes out, but quickly dispatched by the hammer from Tech, and it looks like their opportunity is unfortunately about to end. Seth comes back, and he puts the pressure on Pharaoh, pushing her out of the sky. Turrets come up. Anyone walking through there is going to get blasted. Slow down. Oh, my. Snipes the Pharah with a symmetra. It's not every day that you see that happen. But uh, the Pharah's playing low to the ground. You can get a teleport from Reaper. Comes behind. Quick wall from May. Brady just using these walls like a scalpel. Making this Reaper's life really hard. He's had to use this entire kit at this point. And there it is. Excellent synergy between the team here. Quick egress back to the point, setting themselves up. Baron tries to go for an easy ult to get a pick, but again, Brady's just watching that back line, keeping it locked down. Excellent job, everyone. And Manor, 1-0 into Ephrata. Great work.
All right, folks, sorry about the pause there. I just had to confer with the team, help make some decisions. I am actually one of the coaches, so I'm just assisting Connor, making a few choices about how we approach this. So we're going to be bringing in a few alternates, uh, some flex players who are going to get a, their first opportunity to play as well. I'm really excited to see how they do this season. So uh, IGV, IGV here, rather, otherwise known as uh, JJ, he's going to be in on tank for tech. Uh, he kind of plays that off-tank role on the team, uh, has a kit that tech doesn't focus on as much. So we're going to be approaching this a little differently. Um, we're also going to be bringing in on, looks like on DPS, we're going to be swapping out Steel, a.k.a. Brady, for uh, Rick, otherwise known as, I believe it's uh, Deadly Mouse. And then we're going to have a support swap. So we are bringing in Hypercharge, a.k.a. Jaden, one of the uh, oldest members of the team, actually. He was here at the very beginning um, in place of, it looks like, Wyatt, who uh, you may have seen as, I'm trying to remember his handle right now. But you saw him on, uh, on I believe, Lucio there. So uh, let's see how this new team composition goes. We still have to enter the map selection phase. Uh, so we're going into bands. Uh, so Pemanor, because they won, is going to ban one map from the hybrid map list. And then because Ephrata lost this first game, um, they are going to get to choose a map from the remaining pool of maps. Gives them a bit of an advantage here. All Pitmana gets to do is choose one map from hybrid that they don't want to play on. The rest is pretty much just, you know, whatever it is. Uh, you know, we have to hope that they pick something that we feel strong about. So Pitmana bans Midtown. It's one of the newer maps that's been added in Overwatch 2. Um, these, <laughs> Coach Connor, I think, not a big fan of Midtown. Uh, so he just wants it out. Um, I think he believes that we're going to be more successful with a team that is uh, playing on maps they may be a little more familiarity with. I would expect an older hybrid map to come up here. In fact, I know exactly the one that Pet Manor is hoping gets picked. <laughs> but let's see if it actually is on that for this dance card. Appreciate the heads up, Zogstar. Video is all good now. Yeah, thank you. Just had to step aside for a bit while a few things got sorted. All right, Eichenvall for Ephrata, which I know a few of our players were hoping was not going to be their choice. We were looking for King's Row there, a map that Pen Manor's been pretty strong on, actually, for a few years running. Uh, no small part because of Tech's expertise on Reinhardt, though we are now bringing in JJ, who is less of a Reinhardt main. So let's see how he handles this choice. This might be more JJ's domain. Let's hope. Eichenwald is, ooh, we have a bit of a change happening here. Let's see. Ah, a bit of a swap on sides here. So one thing that the winner of the previous game gets to do is decide where they want to start. In this case, it looks like Pet Manor has decided to swap themselves over to the red team 
Uh, I have to confess, I can't remember if that means they'll be attacking or defending first. I think it's attacking. Uh, so we're going to get to see at least which side they would prefer. There's a tactical advantage um, to one side or the other. So let's find out their particular approach here. Hey, Canna Holding. Thanks for following. Appreciate it. Uh, Canna Holding, if you don't know, is actually a D&D uh, &D, uh, Twitch channel. If you're ever interested in watching, they do a lot of custom games, some weird, silly stuff. So definitely uh, give it a follow as well if you ever have a chance to check it out. Uh, from alumni and Rocket League coach uh, Crispy Craig. All right, let's jump into the game here. Femina Nation, we are on Vikingball in the heart of Germany. Beautiful map. You start in this uh, old-style German tavern. Look at these tapestries and shields. Of course, it's been wrecked by the uh, cyber futuristic war that has ruined the world of Overwatch. The cooler thing is that there's a really cool castle that they're painting, so, you know, it's awesome. Uh, looks like we've got Ephrata on attack here. And on defense, I believe, is going to be Penn Manor. No, no. Sorry, got that switched around a little bit. Looks like if we're going you know with uh, for, Penn Manor. Inquiry Penn is unnecessary. Manor. <laughs> but if you don't know, <laughs> on, uh, how do you inquire? All right, cool. So, uh, jumping into the game here. Looks like we're going with... I want to ride a novel. I said no, Jameson. JJ, our tank is going to be on Sigma. That's kind of his specialty in the role right now. Me. We've got uh, Rick on Deadly Mouse as Junkrat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Big Jiffer. <laughs> Nate is going to be playing Zenyatta. Uh, a character he played quite a bit during tryouts, and uh, his skill with him really stood out. Uh, Jaden on Hypercharge. He's going two, to be Mercy. One. And then we have Attack. Seth coming back on Shazam. Ooh, a flank from Junkrat. Trying to draw their damage back a little bit. Put some damage out, splitting the team a little bit. Ephrata is scattered. That's uh, some damage for Seth right there. It's a uh, on a support. JJ comes in, starts taking room using Sigma. It's a massive hit beam. I'm sure that Reinhardt's not able to get full value. We do lose our Junkrat. Uh, but Seth refuses to stop bragging. Uh, so there's yet another. That's his third. And JJ cleans up the rest. Excellent cap for Pen Manor. And uh, why stop there, right, Seth? Just keep on. Oh, yep, time to turn around. Okay. Some great support there. Jade's on top of it, making sure that Seth stays in the fight. Keep pressing that one. That's what I was looking for. So at this point, the uh, payload's going to start. Pen Manor having capped that first point, kind of a King of the Hill situation. Now has to escort this payload all the way around. Kind of where to you see a junk rat lobbing grenades from. Uh, here we go, pop over. And there's the oh, is he gonna get up? There it is! I'm just getting started. Alright, that's a res coming out from the effort of Mercy, but she has revealed herself now. And Seth, I think, is not gonna let that pass easily. Looks like uh, Rick has swapped over to Genji. This provides great front flanking power to support the angles that Seth is taking. Seth also resurrected. Lives again to do even more damage. Up, oh, huge shield coming up from uh, Effort as Metro, but the mobility that we're getting from Seth allows him to maneuver around the shield. He does so. That's just Effort as uh, tank keeps everything up. Good lord. Is Seth going? Oh, no. Didn't expect the laser. But he does manage to almost 1v3 the team. Takes out Mercy as she comes to support her Reinhardt. Can this Reinhardt hold out against Seth's barrage? I don't know. He definitely sees why they... Oh, oh, good lord. Oh, the humanity. Comes the resurrection from Ephrata's Mercy again, keeping their team, allowing them to prevent the kind of staggering that we're seeing from so much of the damage coming out. Seth does not care for the duck rat, and uh, yeah, he's not going to let him go. Great healing from our Baptiste keeps him up. 
Ricky, despite the fact that he is massively overextended. Here comes the immortality field to try and counter the uh, heal. Heal takes out Genji, unfortunately. Alright, so Death Without Pepperda is actually going to push us back a little bit. Not even Seth can handle this. He's going to need a haste to the tree. Let's see if he can survive. I think so. And he's back to the safety of Pet Manor's side of the map. All right, quick regroup from Pet Manor. Feeling better. You're going to be a little bit of a heal. We need to keep the barrier. Got a little sneaky, sneaky dragon blade coming around on the side here. Rick is new to the character, but hungry first elimination side. Save. That was almost unfortunate. But that blade creates the chaos needed for everyone else to just push in and clean up. We are now at the second point. This is the final stretch for Pemana. They have to escort the payload inside the castle and to the throne room. There's a lot of, of corners, uh, small angles of attack that effort has to be able to take advantage of. This is a difficult point to attack. Again, building up his ultimate by the end of the bar. That's the pop's ultimate. This makes his uh, right click the infinite. Reach with it up quickly. But uh, Reinhardt's bearing down on him. This is something, yep. Not able to stand up against that for long. Resurrection comes out again. Seth refuses to die. All right. Genji cutting up with a big fight, but our mercy is called out as she tries to support. Game is coming out. Excellent, excellent practice. The whole tree coming in. Genji gets the hammer. Baptiste dealing damage, firing out the heals. Swiss Army knife for the character. Somehow, Headmaner actually manages to win that fight despite having lost the barrier. Our mercy again. Terrible. And there comes the smash. Oh, but a terrible wall for their main active limits. Effort's ability to capitalize. We lose Seth, and that looks like a full cleanup for Ephrata. The payload is sitting on the point at this point. We've got about a little over two minutes left to try and cap this. I am confident that Mary can do it, but we want to try and create as much time difference as possible. Um, if it comes down to it, you'll see why. Looks like Tank is thinking of switching to Arisa, but there's a bit of a conversation Fire happening. Back onto Ryan. No, not back onto, but onto Ryan. So, let's go for a Ryan Ryan battle. It's a small corridor. Like a hammer. Um, but looks like an ultimate erupts behind from Ephraim May. He's going to lock down a lot of the team. While Pet Manor manages to get a charge off on their mercy. Our Reinhardt. Wrapped behind the Bad JJ. Can he get out of this? No, unfortunately not. Without their tank, they have no protection. This is a severe damage. Severe support. Reinhardt, thank you. I'm ready to Real hard. Seconds left on the map. Railgun still at full power. So here's the deal, those of us who are new to Overwatch. Ephrata is now going to go on the attack. If they can't get all the way to the end, Pen Manor wins. If they do, 
then the time difference is what matters. Pet Manor will have 30 plus seconds, basically the time they have added onto an existing timer uh, to get as far as they can, and then it comes to Ephrata's chance. So if Ephrata can go 3-0 and here as well, you know, then they have a real chance to turn this around and get this to game three. Let's see if they have what it takes. Who's your favorite hockey team? I'm more of a basketball person. Not so a fan we're on a very similar team, comp as last don't time. Don't put words in my mouth. So we're swapping to Anna now and Lucy. Stay sharp. It's Lucio not is a newer alive, character for Jade, but Jade is someone who has constantly pushed themselves to learn new things about this game to be better than he was before. So I'm Make interested sure you're to ready. see how he takes on the who challenge. Who knows what we'll find out there. Nate on um, Anna is going to provide a nano boost that's going to make our Genji and our Five, Sojourn incredibly four, deadly three, whenever two, they decide to use their one. ultimates. Attackers incoming. Defend objective. Hello. Ooh. Any it's like we're dealing with a Widowmaker here. Oh no, I'm a creep. But uh, <laughs> quick. <laughs> uh, quick bit of punishment. Already puts their resurrection on cooldown. Yep. We're dealing with McCree, Junkrat, Doofus. Ah, oh, man after my own heart. Uh, Mercy and Moira. So the plan is to this team exactly. But I can appreciate that everyone's doing the best that they can. To try and turn this one around. There we go. Rick chasing down the Mercy. Oh, they're taking down my Moira. Gotta watch for those beans. And she has a little defense again. Looks like after the man she gets someone on the point. Mercer Moira teleported behind. But this is a risky move. Cybernetic innovation. She's now staggered. And now there's a stumble again. I'd like to see what this is. Oh. Doesn't get better than that. You really can't telegraph yourself when, when Seth is around. Uh, but we have to ask, what is the... Oh, swap into Winston. I think that Effort has figured out their best chance is to pull the fight past You don't want to be fighting at the show, you want to be fighting on the point. Nope, timed it a little bit wrong that time, bud. There we go. Think twice. A little too easy to track. That's a team kill. Two minutes left for Ephrata to turn this one around. They just have to win one team. But we've got a lot of ultimates queued up for Pet Manor. I think we're about to see... Oh, we say, uh... He's crap, I think. They are all set up for us here. Great rock on Winston. Stops and dies. Slow him down for a moment, but that's gonna cut something together. Teleport in. Oh, what a rock! Yep, there it is. Good to be adjustment. Ah, uh, but the Moira puts the ult out to prevent the pick. Can Genji get this done? He has his blade. Nice save. Winston ultimate for Ephrata, trying to hold the point, trying to do what he can, trying to make something of his push, but he's lost his entire team, and his health pool is dropping quickly, and that's going to be it. Minute left for Ephrata. They pretty much got one fight left in them. out of that two ults down, but it looks like Ephrata might actually be able to, unless Seth can save it with 60 hit points left. Oh no, Winston is back. That man 
to get back on the point, but they are quickly in a position where they're about to lose this point. Is Ephrata going to manage to take this? That's the race in the air. We lose our dead We lose our healers. It's just Seth again, but I don't think he can 1v5. I'm sorry, Seth. Yep. He manages to get away from Winston. And Ephrata takes the point. It is their payload. They have two minutes and 18 seconds left. Try and get this to the next point. That feels much better. Not Still so sitting on his Sojourn ultimate, coming out of Seth. It's dangerous in his hands. Relentlessly chasing Genji, caught out and punished for it. Winston ult again. But Pitman is in a bit of a disarray here. A lot of damage, a lot of spam coming out. Yep, there goes the tank. One after the other. Oh my. It's rough to watch. And he's still got a little bit of all left. He tries to cut his wings. Once he drops the bubble. Push up, try and keep them from getting the payload and leaving. Precision and control. Look at that. Angel handedly holding down Ephrata. And there it is. Victory, Victory for Penn Manor. 2 0. Oh. Great job. Great teamwork, but also great individual performances as well. And uh, I think it's it's pretty clear that this game belonged to Shunem. This ends now. Watch this again. One, two, two not so fast. Three, three, four. And that's just one of many. Well, thank you so much, guys, for watching. Really appreciate you spending time with us. Uh, we will be letting you know about future streams. 
It's going to be a little inconsistent as we are still working on building up our streaming core, but we thank you so much for spending your time with Penminer Esports, and uh, thank you to Ephrata for the game. It was fantastic, and we really appreciate you.